Hello guys, John with you. It's time to start a new project and this basically is the new project. It's a uh, 135th scale from Academy. It's the US Army M1A2 V2 Tusk 2. Okay, uh, this particular version of it came out in uh, 2017, so it's out three years now. Um, it has individual track links. There's uh, quite a number of parts to each track link. Um, according to this here's one, two, three, four, five, six, six little pieces for each track. Okay, so it's got separate pads, you've got the main kind of carrier piece for it, uh, guide horns and end connectors. Okay, um, it looks a nice kit, it's got the, um, the, the SEP2 and the the SEP was the uh, V2, that's uh, version 2 of the SEP, and it's also got the uh, Tusk 2, okay, which basically is uh, the add on armor, the um, remote machine gun up here, it's been in a remote station. Uh, that's that's really basically what the uh, V2 Tusk 2 is, uh, is all about. Um, there is a, a, a Tusk 3 out. I don't know whether there's a kit out for the Tusk 3, but I know that the actual tank is up to a Tusk 3. It's not even a Tusk 4 at this stage. Okay, but we're not talking about them, we're talking about this. We're talking about this Academy kit. Uh, we're going to sort of crack open the box and see what's inside in it. I can tell you straight away, it is quite a hefty box. There's quite a lot of parts in it. Um, let's have a quick look at the box art. We've got a picture of a tank on the desert. There you go. There's your uh, there's your box art. On the side here, uh, it gives you different uh, little bits and pieces that are inside in it. Um, it gives you markings then for the uh, first battalion, the 66th Armour Regiment, Third Armoured Brigade Combat Team, Fourth Infantry Division, Germany, uh, which was in there in February of 2017. And then, if you want to do it in the green, uh, it's the first battalion, 66th. There we go. 1st Battalion, 66th Armour Regiment, 3rd Armoured Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division, Germany, May 2017. So obviously between February and May they repainted their tankies. Okay, it's got the, uh, what they call the Common Remote Operated Weapon System, or Crows. Okay, so you've got a little crow's nest on it. Okay. Uh, another little bit of information here. It says it's got a detailed crows. Okay, so that's what that means. Uh, Tile-shaped reflective armor with slat and slat armor can be built as V2 or V2 Tusk 2. Uh, newly tooled slat armor and pr to protect the turret. Build as build with soft rubber or connected tracks. It gives you the options there, so it gives you the rubber tracks as well. Accurate gun shield with clear parts and uh, features photo etch as well. So there's plenty going on inside in the box. Um, not very much information on the sides there. Um, gives a sort of a colour call out. Um, doesn't give us a parts count. Pity, pity. So because it was kind of looking for that because it is quite uh, quite a hefty box. There's a nice bit of weight in it. So no further ado, let's get it open. Let's get to have a look at what we get inside. What are we paying our uh, our spandulics our money for? What are we uh, sort of getting into debt for? What are we sort of getting into arguments with the wife over spending the money on? And there we go. That's what we're that's what we're whinging about. That's what we're buying. Okay, we've got uh, lots on lots of plastic in this. Okay, we've got three sprues in this bag. I'll go through them all one by one, quite in a few minutes, right? We've got a bag here with a load of sprues, uh, black sprues, so they're all the uh, our track parts. Okay. We've got uh, a clear parts and two other sprues there. Uh, I've looked at two identical sprues. There's our uh, our add-on plique armor and our zip and bluff and God knows what else they probably will call it. Okay, we've another one here with more armor on it. 
we've got some wheels with three sprues in this bag. So another big bag here then with uh, our upper turret, or sorry, upper turret, we've got our turret main piece, we've got a small sprue, we've got two other big sprues in there as well. Um, we've got our lower hull, our sides, our upper hull part. Uh, we've got our rubber tracks. Now oh, those rubber tracks actually look quite nice. I must admit, they look nice tracks. They're nice and heavy anyway. Okay, so we've got uh, rubber tracks. We've got our got our decals, decals, transfers, stickers and we've got our photo etch. Okay, we've got some grills and things there in photo etch. And then we've got our paperwork. Okay, so I'm going to put the box aside, we're going to start with the paperwork and then we're going to start opening packages. Okay, so I'll just bring the camera down a little bit and we'll have a look at the paperwork first. Okay. Our first piece of paper is all right, we got manual four, manual two. We get these in order. <laughs> we might as well. I think this is manual one, manual two. This thing should be manual three. Manual Manuel three. Okay, that's a good little. There we go. So we got four Manuels, four manuals. And the usual little safety sheets as well. Right, so in manual one we've got pull out sheet. Okay. Um so we've got the uh you can kind of dis better decide at this stage whether you're just doing the uh the M1 A2 Abrams V2 or whether you're doing the V2 with the Tusk 2. Okay, you can decide at that stage. You're putting together the uh, the lower hull suspension, all the wheelies, more wheelies and suspension pieces. Uh, building up our tracks. Okay, she shows you the, how to make all the tracks. Um, by the looks of that, there's another little uh, option there for the uh, it's like a little extra sort of piece under the hull, extra armor protection, mine protection, but more than likely. And uh, we've got the um, the rear, the rear of it there, where you got the uh, air filters into the engine and all that. Uh, then we're fitting the uh, the top on. And that's basically manual one, right? So manual one, basically, we're getting the uh, the body of it built. Manual two, right? We've got more pieces here. Whatever this uh, this thing here is that goes on the front, I haven't the faintest idea of what it is. Not a clue. I'm sure somebody there will tell me what what, what that yoke is. Okay, it's on the front of the tank. You see it in the picture there in the front of the tank, but uh, I don't know what the feck it is. It's uh, it's there anyway. It doesn't tell us what it is. Oh look at that! Some nice uh, photographs as well of uh, the completed parts and what all them look like. Okay, there's our uh, remote uh, weapons station, our crows. Okay, building up all that. Quite extensive, quite extensive. I must admit. Um, there's our turret baskets, getting them all made up. Okay. Um, this also is a pull-out one. Oh, this is, yeah, this is for our, uh, we've got the, um, our armor parts, extra armor, whichever version you're doing, be it the normal one or the one with the uh, extra armor on it. And building up the turret then to uh, the basic turret, okay. And uh, these then are all our, our bits and pieces that we're going to add on to that basic turret, okay? Our um, 
sort of machine guns, shooty things and remote weapons stations and the turret basket then and uh, our antennas and aerials and all that good stuff. Right. Tons of paperwork. <laughs> so manual tree is we're getting all them fitted onto us. Um, these are the sort of, as far as I know, they're air cleaner units for the uh, sort of uh, NBC type stuff in it. Might be wrong, but uh, I think I'm right. It's uh, communications blocks and all that kind of good stuff that goes on the outside of it. Uh, all these sensors and things. Um, more turret baskets and things. This is all to do with the turret. Then we got our turret armor, side armor. God knows what else. Crikey Mac, I'll be building this for a month, but the next one, if not longer, okay. And all the uh, accessories that go onto the side of it, tow rope, uh, what else have we got? We've got jerry cans, okay, and jerry cans, aerials, antennas, all that kind of lovely stuff there. We end up with a nice very nice large size turret. Okay. So finally manual four. I'm trying to I'm only kind of quick skipping you through these. I'm sure a lot, I know that a lot of other people go into step by step detail of what you do with with, with uh, in each of these manuals. And I notice that when I when I'm going through watching uh, these unboxings myself I get bored very very fast I just want to show me the parts show me the parts I want to see does it have this what are the tracks like so I'll just kind of quick uh, fly through these um, this is painting and decal placement and decal placement or painting and sticker placement, whatever you want to call them okay so that's what four is it's, it's uh, basically uh, color call outs where to paint it and what to paint it and where to stick your uh, stick your stickers, stick your decals, and also give us a nice uh, sprue map. Okay, right. Will you give it a parts count of that? Nope. And we do have quite a quite a large selection there of unused parts as well, as you can see. Okay. So obviously that there's uh, other versions again, right? So let's get onto our plastic. First of all, we're going to have a look, a quick look at this. I'm not going to open it up because I'm not going to be using the uh, the, the photo etch for, for, for some while yet, and I'd like for to taking it out when I'm actually going to use it. But we can we can get a nice view of what what's there without uh, opening it up. Right, we've got um, engine grills and things, and a couple of other little doll dieties and stuff. Don't know what they are, but they're there and they're photo etched and they're pretty as hell. Okay, so here we have our decals, decals, transfers, and stickers. I'm just going to call them decals from now on. Okay, I'm not going to go into the decals, decals, transfers, stickers. I'll leave that to Simon. Mr. Simon Kemp does that, and that's where I got that idea from. Okay, so I don't want to be copying everybody. But there's our decals, decals. Okay, one out for first our first bag of parts. Right. Our first bag of parts. Like I said, there's three sprues inside in it. One large and two or two large and one small. Look at a quick look at the small one. We're just gonna have a quick a quick look through. And what like what unboxings to me are really is what the level of um, detail is it nicely molded what's the plastic like where are ejection marks um, what's the condition of the plastic and uh, flash and I don't know the ideas you know uh, how many of them are there okay so I'm not going to call out what they are because I don't know and I'm not very technical about it you know yourself if you want what they are okay but you can see there from the from the condition and all that of these pieces right whoa yay there we go come on 
some very nice detail there, really, really very nice detail on those. Right. That's all nicely raised. Okay. And it is it is well raised as you can see. So they'll pick up washes and all that kind of stuff and dry brushings. Love dry brushings, they really make things uh, st stand out. Or as some people like to say, to make them pop. I'm not one of those people. Okay. Right, so we've got our um, our lower hull. We've got our side parts, okay, for the lower hull. Again, lovely, lovely detail there on those. Okay. And we've got our upper hull. got the uh, bottom and top parts of our uh, turret. I like the way the, the numbers are, or the, you know, the, the sprue markings. Quite easy to see just before as you pick it up. You see straight away that this is sprue B. Okay. Um, there's those uh, indicators there that go on the turret and uh, on the sides there to sort of show that it's a, a NATO vehicle the hobo. Okay, lovely bit of slide moulding there for these parts. What they are, again, I don't know. I do apologise, I do not know. Okay, we've got some slide moulding there, so these are our barrel parts. Okay, so we've got nice, uh, nicely slide moulded. So we've got a multi-piece barrel Okay. There's that yoke again that I don't know what it is called or what it is even for, but I'm sure somebody will tell me like I said. Right. So so far these parts are quite nice and very, very nice and all right. Into our next bag of goodies. I'm talking this one. Trying very carefully not to cut my fingers off. Okay, so I'll just put those up there and I can we'll start with we'll have a look at this one. Yeah, there's all that uh, nice bumpy armour, okay. The, uh, I don't know whether it's ERA, well, I know they are e ERA blocks, right? ERA, for those people that do not know, and then I, know, I don't want to sound patronising here, it's explosive reactive armour, basically. I do know that some people don't know what it, it, uh, it refers to, and that's basically what it is. What these curvy bits are, I do not know. Whether is it another form of uh, ERA or it's standoff armor, I do not know. Uh, we've got some nicely, nicely molded pieces. Okay, you kind of a, a look along there, right? Uh, sprue F. We've got two of these sprues, okay, two identical sprues. So we'll just have a look at one of them, it's pointless looking at both of them. We've got our wheels, we'll have a look at one of them. Okay, we've got our wheels, obviously, there's two different types there. So they go together, have a look at the inside of them there, right. We've got there our wheels, we've got jerry cans, two 
toolbox <laughs> spare track tow hooks and some you know even these little parts here they're, they're very very nicely molded and uh, lovely little, little detail in them I presume they're all parts of the uh, lower hull anyway because there's our suspension arms and our drive sprocket now uh, whether it's a three part drive sprocket or not no I do not know or do we use all of them? Depends which version and things like that. I don't know. We don't know until I get into the building of it. But uh, when it comes to detail and how they look, they look quite nice indeed. Right, you can see the, the deep section there, those bolts in there and all that. Very, very nice. Okay, we've two of those. So we've uh, uh, basically a left and a right. Here's a small bag. And in the small bag we've got our clear parts. Okay, plenty, plenty of clear parts there. Um, it's even got the clear hubcaps. Or they go on the wheels. I don't know what they wouldn't call them hubcaps. The sort of hub nut. I know that in the real tank they are see through, so you can see the uh, the level of uh, oil inside them, lubrication oils. So that's that's a nice little uh, thing. I d like I said, I do know that they are uh, see through. Okay, I presume these are all then for the uh, for the little doghouse thing there on the um, on the remote weapon station. You got the clear blocks there for the or the commander's turret or the commander's cupola. Okay, and lovely more lovely clear parts. Okay. Nicely detailed and, uh, and all that. Now that piece there now is quite nice. Nice little bit of detail in that. Okay, so there's our clear parts. Parts that are clear. We're all clear on that. Okay, we've got two of these. Oh, this is sprue F again, so that means we've got three sprue Fs. Three F sprues. Okay. We've already had a look at the F sprue. Another big bag here with parts. Oh, we've got the D sprue. That looks like our uh, the uh, seven point six two shooty thing. There's a fifty cal shooty thing, or a twelve point seven centimeter. If you want to go there down that line, okay. Or the big half inch gun. Isn't that it? The loud one. And anybody out there that have ever fired one of those 50 cals, they are a sweet, sweet machine gun to fire. And I'm saying that out of experience. I have fired one. Absolutely beautiful. Lovely thump, 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 thump off it, you know. Uh, it's sort of a double cock it. But uh, wow beautiful machine gun to fire. Once you've fired it you've sort of uh, 
you said yourself that is definitely the best thing I have ever fired in my life. I want to fire it again. Never fired it in anger, thank God. And I hope I never had to. I'm glad I never had to, should I say. But uh, I know that there's probably one or two of you out there that have fired it in anger. I haven't. I've only fired it on the wings of a tripod on the ground. Okay. So that's Sprue D. Sprue D. Okay, we got Sprue C. Like I said, you mean when you're. Do we have another 250 cows here? Ooh, so we get to use. Obviously, we're probably only going to get, get to use one of them, but which one will we use? We don't know. Again, we like I said, we'll find out when we're building it. And there's another 7.62 as well. Or one of them might even be a 5.56. I do not know. I presume that once they're on that, once they're on a piece of armour, they'd be a 7.62. Okay, and we've got another ring there that goes onto the commander's hatch with the uh, with the holder for the uh, machine gun, and I have seen one of them earlier on. I, and like we did see there with the um, when, it gave, when we looked at the sprue map there was quite a lot of parts that are not used for this particular version ok there's an ammo box there you can nicely detailed uh, ammo on it how good is your painting <laughs> there's a test in that alone Okay, so that is Sprue C. And finally for our big sprues, last of our sort of our main sprues, and then we're into the tracks. We've got the last of these sprues. This is Sprue E. There's that uh, skid plate. We call it a skid plate. It goes underneath. It's judging by the shape of it, it's for deflecting uh, deflecting landmines. Right, we've got our uh, engine grills there at the back. Hatches there. Nice um, baskets, tart baskets. Okay. We've got our, uh, by the looks of it, it says the commander's hatch, um, cupola thing, all nicely built up there. Smoke launchers. That's the driver's hatch by the thing by the look of it there. Have a look at the back of these. Now we do have uh, ejector pin marks there, but they are on the back. Why I'm looking at the back, I do not know what basically uh they're not on the front. <laughs> That's most important, isn't it? That they're not on the front. Nothing worse than having to fill all those fickers. So as you can see, there's quite quite a lot of parts with this kit. Really, really is. And then we've got our our bag of tracks. Okay. These are the uh, individual link tracks. Does have the rubber tracks, which we will have another quick look at before we uh, finish up. But we'll uh, have a look at these Indy Link tracks. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. We've got eleven sprues of tracks. That is quite a lot of track. Quite a lot indeed. Okay, so we'll have a look at them. I want to be very, very careful because I can feel them sort of moving on my finger here, and I don't want to lose them. They're the guide horns. Okay. So there's our guide horns. 
there's our track pads so I'll probably have it upside down there yeah I did okay so we've got guide horns and track pads there centre them we've got so there's the uh, we call it the carriage for them right we've got all the little carriages and then we've got our end clips, our end pieces, end caps, right? So for each track, then you take, let's say, one of these, fit on the two pads, onto it, guide horn in the middle, and join it then from one to the next with our little. Uh, end caps now they are all nicely drilled out there so will it be workable I don't know I do not know um, it's going to be fun finding out I'll tell you that much it's going to be fun finding out but uh, they are very very nicely detailed really really nicely detailed okay All I can say is it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. And it would be nice if they did, if they turned out that they were quite workable, wouldn't it? And uh, hopefully they will be. Hopefully they will be workable. You know, as in the, when you put on your end caps, they just pop on rather than having to glue them in place. Because once you glue them in place, you know yourself that that, that sort of uh, no longer makes them workable. No longer makes them workable, and it would make it harder then for you know going up around the side. You probably have to build your your strips. You know, make your own sort of um, your own version of the Lincoln length. But it's nice if you can kind of get it workable, especially if the uh, you know you can play around with your suspension. So like I. You know, you can have it kind of gone up over something on a dial, so you can you know set your suspension up a bit. So therefore, you can have your track to kind of match that. If you wanted to go down that line. Okay, so there's our tracks. Like I said, there are tons of sprues there in our tracks. Uh, Eleven of them, and loads and loads of parts for each of those. Let's have another last quick look then at the alternative. If you don't want to go down that line, you can go down this line here and have your um, your rubber tracks, and they actually seem quite nice, you know. So just if you are getting this kit, okay, and you are going to build it, and you're afraid of those ones, I suggest that you go ahead and try them. Go ahead and try you know have have a go at making them and if it doesn't work out you've always got something to fall back on you have the uh, the rubber tracks to fall back on and like I said they are quite nicely detailed you know they're detailed inside on both sides quite nicely the rubber tracks do have a few kind of sinkholes and things in them here and there well there's one there anyway there's one here another one there so you know they have to be filled a little bit but when you compare it to building all them if you make a, a hames of building them at least you've got these ones here to fall back on so anyway that's, that's it that's all that's all she wrote that's all that comes inside in the kit uh, looking forward to getting it made and if you'd like to see me get making it uh, the only thing I can say is subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and by hitting the bell you'll be notified as soon as I upload a video. So let's, um, I'm going to love you and leave you. Enjoy uh, any other videos that I have on my channel. So subscribe to the channel and if you have already subscribed, thank you very much. I do appreciate it, I really, really do. So in the meantime, be nice to one another. Have a nice day, enjoy your modelling. For me it's a hobby. What is it for you? You know, I don't know. But for me, it's a hobby. I enjoy what I do. I get my, I get my jollies from it. I get my jollies. That's the way they say it. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Let's stay safe. So, go and buy yourself a kit, build it, and enjoy it. As John signing off. 
and see you soon, lads.